Chapter 27 covers topics in linear algebra, and there are a number of routines built into R which will, for example, find eigenvalues, eigenvectors, um, invert matrices, etc. A couple of them will be reviewed here. So let's start with the usual way of setting up a matrix. This is from a much earlier chapter. You can set the matrix A to a matrix. Let's say we want to put elements 1 through 6 into that matrix. We could say that this is a, a three column matrix, which means it'll also be a two row matrix. So if you take a look at A, there it is. Notice again that the default is that the values are put in column wise. And now that you've seen data frames, you see why um, that's been the default in R. Well, here are a couple things you can do. There are built-in routines, some of which we've seen before, such as row sums, capital S. And what this will do is it will sum up the values in the row. Plus 1, plus 3, plus 5 gives you the 9. 2 plus 4 plus 6 gives you 12. The apply function can be handy when working with matrices. So if we want to apply to the rows, and that's what the one is about, is the first or the second argument. And let's say we want to apply the maximum function to the rows. You can do that in that fashion. And you can see the largest value in this row is a five, and the largest row value in this row is a six. Likewise, we can say apply A, and this time if you put a two in there, this will be applied to the columns. And let's say we want to calculate standard deviations. So in this case, we get three numbers. They're all identical. And the first one is the standard deviation of the first column, which are the values 1 and 2. Second one is the standard deviation of the second column, which are the numbers 3 and 4. And the third one is the standard deviation of the third column, and that's the numbers 5 and 6. Notice that those all give you the same standard deviation. So these, uh, the apply function is known as a functional because it takes the name of a function as an argument and you can put any argument you want in there. You can put minimum, maximum, standard deviation, variance, absolute value, whatever you would like, you can uh, put in there. Now, if you want to take the matrix A and say multiply it by a scalar, the way that is done is just three times A and the matrix that you get will triple each element in the matrix A. Likewise, if you want to take each element in the matrix A and divide it by 3, you get this matrix. And in this case, what you have is each individual element divided by 3. If you want the reciprocal of each element in the matrix A, a is about to disappear up here at the top, but notice the reciprocal of 1 gives you a 1. Reciprocal of 2 gives you a 1 half. Reciprocal of 3 gives you a 1 third, etc. Finally, if you want the transpose of A, that is done with the T function, and T of A will give you the transpose of the matrix A, and there it is the original matrix transposed. So let me clear this all out. I'm going to push the broom up here, clear out the screen. We'll print out A again. And now we're going to get into the first matrix operation, which is matrix multiplication. And let's say I want to take A, and I want to multiply it by the transpose of A. That right there is not the right way of doing it. The reason why is this is the normal multiply operation and we want this to be the matrix multiply operator and the way that's done in R is you put a percent sign on either side of the multiply. So this will check the dimensions to make sure that they are compatible. First of all the matrix A you can see up above here is a 2 by 3 matrix. The transpose of A will be a 3 by 2 matrix, so the inside dimensions match, and the result of this multiplication will give you a 2 by 2 matrix, and there is the 2 by 2 matrix. 
you should multiply that out by hand and make sure that uh, that uh, works right for you. Now, the square matrix, I'm going to name it P, and let's put a 1 by 4 in there, and let's put in a 2 by 2 matrix, and also we're going to assume that the by row parameter here in this case is equal to true. And now we have the matrix P that looks like this, 1, 2, 3, and 4, entered row-wise. Let me clear the screen and put P back in place again. There he is. First function I'd like to demonstrate here is the diagonal function. This is a very versatile function in linear algebra in that it can do several different things depending on the argument that it's given. If you give it a matrix, and in this case let's give it the matrix P, and if that is a square matrix, it will simply extract the diagonal elements, which in this case are a 1 and a 4. So that's one way to use the diag function. A second way to use the diag function is to enter a vector rather than a matrix in here. And let's enter the vector 1, 4, 3, 2. In this case, it will create a diagonal matrix with a 1, a 4, a 3, and a 2 as diagonal elements. And then, of course, everything off diagonal will be a 0. Another way that diag can be used is to give it an integer. So if I give diag the integer 5, it will generate what's known as the 5 by 5 identity matrix. An identity matrix means there's a 1 on the diagonal elements and zero on the off diagonal elements. So again, diag is a very versatile function. If you feed it a matrix, it will extract the diagonal elements. If you feed it a vector, it will create a diagonal element or diagonal matrix with the elements of the vector as the diagonal elements. And finally, if you give diag an integer such as five, it will give you the 5 by 5 identity matrix. So I'm going to erase that and put P back up on the screen. Next thing I'd like to do is I'd like to do solve. And what the solve function does is it will find the inverse of a matrix. So here is the inverse of this matrix. If you want to double check and see that it is the, the uh, inverse, you could take P and you could do a matrix multiply by solve of P. And in this case, you do get the identity matrix. Now, you'll notice you have the, uh, the tiny values here, such as uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 16th. And these things are um, a bit of a pain. This is close to the identity matrix, 0 off diagonal and 1 on diagonal. If you want to try to ignore those tiny values which are there because of round off, sometimes the zap small function can work in your favor. And in this case, it does. It does not always work, but in this case, zap small um, changed this 1.1 times 10 to the minus 16th to 0. And so here we get the exact inverse, which is the 2 by 2 identity matrix. Here's another thing that can happen. You can use the solve function and you can put a P in here and then you can put in a, a right hand side. Let's say we put in 5 and 6. What this is solving is it's solving the set of linear equations with the matrix P as a left hand side. So 1, 2, 3, and 4 are the coefficients on the left hand side of e the equation and then 5 and 6 are the values on the right-hand side of the equation, and it's solving that linear set of equations. And when you do this, the solution to that set will be negative 4 and 4.5. Again, more detail and more examples will be given in the book, but that's just one example of solving a uh, set of equations. Another thing that uh, you can do with a square matrix is you can calculate the determinant of a square matrix, and in this case the determinant is negative 2. 
To check that, that's going to be 1 multiplied by 4, which is 4, minus 3 multiplied by 2, so 4 minus 6 is a negative 2, and that is what you get as the determinant. Once again, I'll display P. The last thing that will be illustrated here, again, there is much more in the uh, chapter, uh, are the eigenvalues. If you want to take and calculate the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors, you can do that in one statement, which is eigen of P. And you no notice here that there's dollar sign values. And here will be the eigenvalues given in decreasing order of magnitude. And then just below those, for example, just below the 5.37, will be the associated eigenvector, which is normalized so that its uh, length is 1. So there's the normalized eigenvector associated with this eigenvalue. And once again, here is the second eigenvalue. And here is the associated eigenvector down below it. Notice that these have dollar signs after them, dollar sign values and dollar sign vectors. And what that means is we can take eigen of P, and if you want to extract just the eigenvalues, you can get them in that fashion. Furthermore, if you want to extract just one of those, that is now a vector, of course, of eigenvalues, you could say, I only want the second one, and when you do so, you get just the second one. So this is the way you can go in and extract one particular part of the um, eigenstructure that is being set here. Lots of other good examples in the textbook, so make sure to take a look at them as you do your reading here in Chapter 27.